I don't know, the show was kind of a mess. Not the biggest fan. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to Bye Staffy Next. So today we're talking Netflix again. Mm-hmm. Always. <laughs> I posted a bunch of Netflix recommendation videos and you guys always love them. Always asking for more. So we're doing that today, but we're gonna switch it up a little bit and we're doing like a watch this, not that type of version. I'm gonna tell you guys about eight Netflix TV shows that I don't think are that good. I say skip them. And then I'm gonna give you alternative TV shows that are much more worth your time. A little watch this, not that type of deal. You get it? You get it. And if after this video is done, you still want more recommendations, I'm gonna have all of my Netflix and Hulu TV show and movie recommendation videos linked down in the description box that you can check out after this one's done. Also, if you click on the little I there, they'll all be linked there too. Got that all out of the way, now let's move on to the video. To start us out, the first TV show that I'm gonna recommend you skip and don't waste your time with it's called The Haunting of Hill House. And I'm very sorry to all of you who really like that show. It came out a few years ago and it was billed as this like horror TV show. It's gonna be super scary. And I'm like, cool, I'll give it a try. I gave it a try. I was not impressed. I think halfway through the first episode already, I'm like, this just isn't scary. But you know what? I'll give it to the end of the first episode. See if like, you know, there'll be some cool ender. I don't think it got there. On top of it not being scary, I just found the whole storyline in general to not be that compelling and the characters were just not very likable. I don't know. It was just a big no for me. I couldn't get past the first episode, which usually I'll give a show at least a few tries. Definitely not worth your time. And honestly, I didn't even remember about trying out this show until very recently. I heard they're doing an anthology type of thing, switching it up. And that made me realize I have the perfect alternative TV show that if you want a scary horror anthology TV show, you gotta watch instead American Horror Story. Mm-hmm, American Horror Story. I have mentioned this show on my channel before. You guys know I'm a big fan. This show is so good. If you want scary, you got scary. The storylines are great. The characters are amazing, like just fully formed, interesting, likable or hateable, but you feel something towards them. Sets for days, costumes for days, hair and makeup that will just blow your mind. It sounds like I'm over exaggerating, but seriously, the show is really that incredible. And it's an anthology, which means that season to season, they completely switch up the story. They keep a lot of the same actors, but totally new characters. It's incredible. So definitely for anthology horror, I would pick American Horror Story over The Haunting of Hill House. But I'm not gonna leave you just with one alternative TV show. I gotta give you a second one, and that would be Black Mirror. Black Mirror is also like kind of scary horror. It's in that genre and it's an anthology, but not season by season, it's episode by episode. Each episode is an entirely new world. It's insane. And basically they explore like the dark side of what technology can do to the world, to people, to relationships. If you're into psychology or scary TV shows or just like really good quality TV, I'd recommend this show to you guys. It's just really high quality stuff. And it's also nice to have a show where you can just watch one episode whenever you're feeling like it, but it's not like it continues from episode to episode or it's like, you gotta kind of commit more time to it. This is a show that I've been watching for like months now. Just every once in a while, I'll watch an episode, just dive into that world, love it, and then just move on to other stuff, come back eventually. But both these shows are way better than The Haunting of the Hill House, which is a dud. Now let's move on to my second show. So the second TV show that I recommend you guys just don't give a watch, it's called Quantico. This show is three seasons and it's basically about, Quantico is like the FBI training center. It's like where all the new recruits are training to be full FBI agents. I was really into this show the first season, loved it so much, really great story, but it kind of took a turn after the first season where I felt like the storyline was just like, they're trying to redo it, like make it work again. It felt very repetitive and the characters like kind of got old where I wasn't really liking them, just not really enjoying the show that much. So I'd say really not worth your time. And instead, if you're liking the FBI vibes, I've got a great alternative for you. And that is The Blacklist. Oh, The Blacklist, so good. Blacklist has been on for years. I think we're up to eight seasons at this point and it's still going, lots to watch, we love it. And it's basically about this FBI task force, which partnered up with one of the world's most wanted criminals as their informant. And he helps them secretly to capture all the other criminals. Mm -hmm. See what they're doing. The criminal Reddington is super eclectic, super funny, just incredible character. Honestly, love the show basically because of him. But week to week, they keep switching up the story where they have different criminals they're going after. And then they also have like more overarching storylines. Just overall, very exciting show, very fast paced, likable characters, all good stuff. Big fan. So that's a good like FBI alternative show. But Quantico had this other type of thing going for it. And that was like, 
female lead mystery surrounding her because in Quantico like they thought maybe she was a terrorist or not or whatever that was like the whole thing of the first season so a good alternative to that aspect of the show is I would say The Sinner bit of a jump but it works <laughs> The Sinner had multiple seasons. I only watched the first one and I really, really loved it. It starred Jessica Biel and it's about this woman who's like a mother, a wife, and all of a sudden she gets wrapped up in this thing where she murders somebody and she's just not the type to do that. She has no idea why she does that. Basically the whole season is like trying to figure out like what the heck happened like psychologically. It's a little dark, but it's very like suspenseful, good characters. You really get drawn into the mystery. Love, love that show. That was a really good one. Let's move on to the next. So now this one is kind of a very simple one-to-one -one swab. Watch this, not that. And it's two shows actually in the same series. And the series is American Crime Story. I'm going to suggest you guys don't watch the assassination of Gianni Versace and instead stick to The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Let's start with Versace. Hmm, okay. Basically, both of these shows, they're based on true stories, things that actually happened, very, very interesting stories. But somehow, they made the assassination of Gianni Versace not at all interesting, which is a problem for a TV show. <laughs> Again, I don't like giving up on TV shows, and this one, halfway through the season, I just could not drag myself to the end. I just felt like the acting and like the characters were very over the top. And yeah, I get they're supposed to be over the top type of people, but it was like too much and kind of like a corny way. Definitely like not likable. Like there were multiple storylines going on and just everything was just like not likable. There was nothing to like grab onto. And also I just like found the whole thing kind of boring. Definitely not a fan of that. But on the other hand, they also had a season where they did The People versus OJ Simpson and oof. That was a good show. Yes, it was. I mean, that show was just full of big name actors, some incredible performances, and it was just the whole season was very well paced, I'd say. Like it wasn't just, oh, it's exciting once they get to the verdict, like what's it gonna be? Even though like, you know, from real life, but episode to episode, they really kept it suspenseful and interesting. Like even parts of like the trial that you would think like, okay, like who cares, like just the big stuff, but they found a way to like imbue it with just interest and tension, suspense. It was really good on the edge of my seat. So yeah, definitely in the American crime story world, skip Versace, watch OJ Simpson, on to the next. Next up, I've got a TV show that I feel like is gonna offend a lot of people when I say to skip it, but the show is 13 Reasons Why. I'll start off by saying I read the book, I love the book, really, really good. So I was excited when they came out with the TV show, and then I wasn't very excited once I started watching it. Something about it was just off for me. I found it very dull. The characters were just, mm, whatever that sound means, they were just, mm. I don't know why, like great story from the book, but the show couldn't hold my interest. I didn't care to continue episode to episode and I ended up giving up on the show which I don't often do. It's just, that's why these are all my skip lists. Like if I gave up on it, you know, not good. Mm -mm. So on the other side, we got some alternatives to that. And if you were looking for like a dark teen show, I'm gonna say skip 13 Reasons Why and instead watch Bates Motel. Mm. Bates Motel, probably my favorite TV show of all time. So good. In Bates Motel, we have amazing characters. Like each one is fully developed, but then you have just the relationships between each one so good. You're going to love the characters, be so impressed by the acting and the emotion and hello compelling storyline through each season and each episode. You're never bored. There's always something good going on. Absolutely love Bates Motel. But Bates Motel is a little dark. It's a little like gory. So if that's not for you, don't worry. I have another alternative to 13 Reasons Why. It's another like dark teen show, but I'm talking about Stranger Things. It's less dark and more like action-y. No, not a word, but it works. It's a very like big show, lots of adventure, always things going on. The characters are likable. We've got the 80s vibes, a little nostalgia with the hair and costumes and sets, and music, hello, great music. But if you're feeling like you wanna watch a teen show, definitely I'd say skip 13 Reasons Why. Not much going on there. Stranger Things is on the opposite side of the spectrum. Lots going on, you will not be bored, great show. Okay, on to the next, we have another very simple like one-to-one -one swap type of deal. And we are talking about the Breaking Bad universe. I'm gonna recommend you skip Better Call Saul and instead just stick with the original of Breaking Bad. Better Call Saul is a spinoff that came after Breaking Bad and I was really excited to watch it because I was such a big fan of Breaking Bad. 
but I don't know it just wasn't it for me like I felt like they were just like kind of trying to like continue on with it maybe like capitalize on all the fans of the show it was just a very different vibe it was kind of like corny little slow and definitely felt played out i just i don't think that it translates for fans of breaking bad i don't think that they would also like better call saul so instead of better call saul definitely stick with breaking bad the original if you have not watched that show that's amazing just like an epic epic vibe for like the quick sum up if you don't know what it's about it's basically about this very normal guy who ends up becoming a huge drug dealing criminal like he just falls into it somehow he gets into the craziest situations and there's really good storylines like both on the drug side and on the family side. The drug side. <laughs> Who knew that was a side? I'm not big into like drug themed shows, but that one I found really good. I watch with my family. It's good for everyone. So I'd recommend you watch that show. Yes. Breaking Bad. Not Better Call Saul. Next up, we've got a little murder going on. <laughs> the show that I'm gonna recommend that you just full on skip, it's called How to Get Away with Murder. Ooh, I feel bad about this one. I remember when this show was coming out, just watching the commercials for it, I was like, this looks so good. I watched the first season, I'm like, this is so good. I was so into it. And it kind of just like fell apart from there. Like with what did I, oh, I think Quantico, I was saying before, like first season, really great. They had that storyline and then after that, trying to do it again and then again and then again like it feels just like played out it was just like overall kind of repetitive and then you realize like the characters are just not that likable either i'd say like maybe if you want to watch the first season you can but it's not a show that i would recommend like you really get into because it doesn't go very far yeah how to get away with murder had like a legal kind of viewpoint to it it was about a lawyer professor and her law students who ended up getting mixed up in some stuff and then she's mixed up in some stuff it was the whole thing so you think maybe the show that i'm gonna recommend is also legal but no 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 we're not talking about that aspect of the show we're talking about the how to get away with murder aspect and i'm talking about the show you do, do you see the connection maybe <laughs> you is about this guy who is like a psychopath serial killer but he seems very normal on the outside just you know like conducting relationships out in the world like looking like a normal dude when he's not Penn Badgley stars in it really really good show first season was great I was nervous to watch the second season because I feel like a lot of shows really just like go wrong in the second season this one did a whole new thing they like reinvented their vibe and did it really well as opposed to how to get away with murder you has better characters, better suspense, and overall much more interesting and scarier. If you're looking for a little bit of like the scary vibes, this show is like, ugh, ooh, ooh, creepy. And then I have a second alternative to How to Get Away with Murder. And this is kind of from the aspect of that show, which was like very killer of the week. Like each episode they had a different person like in court or a different like case that they were talking about with a killer. So just from that one aspect alone, I'm going to recommend another show for you and that is Hannibal, which honestly is like right up there as one of my favorite shows. It's like Bates Motel, American Horror Story, Hannibal. It's right there. They're like all tied for first basically. So Hannibal also has that killer of the week vibe but the general storyline is about Hannibal Lecter, like from the movie Silence of the Lambs. Iconic serial killer. And if you've only seen Silence of the Lambs and you've never watched Hannibal, prepare yourself because I would say maybe it is 1000% better. I started by watching the TV show before watching the movie and the movie was just such a letdown. Not as scary, not as suspenseful, not as like dark and twisty. Dark and twisty, that's another show. <laughs> but again, in Hannibal, like really great characters are what make up this show. Hannibal and the other guy in the show, Will, their relationship is so complex, so interesting. Like that's why you watch the show just to see how these two characters interact. Such good stuff. If you are not afraid of the gory, creepy vibes, Hannibal is your show. Goodness, like <laughs> if we're comparing how to get away with murder with you and Hannibal, like different leagues cannot compare, even though I just did. On to show number seven of eight. We're almost at the end of this list, but show number seven that is a total skip it's called Designated Survivor. This is another of those shows that when I saw the commercials for it, I'm like, the concept of this show looks so cool, so good. I'm here for it. This was another one that I watched with my family and we were so into the first season. Like it was good. Basically general concept of the show is somehow like in some way that I'm not gonna mention, the president and the vice president and everyone in the whole succession ends up getting killed at the same time. So 
there's this guy in Congress, maybe? I don't even remember. But he is the designated survivor who gets appointed president in the wake of that emergency. What a clear explanation that was. So it was definitely like an interesting premise. It seemed kind of cool. Like, ooh, like let's watch how this like random guy gets like plucked up to become president. And he was played by Kiefer Sutherland, an actor that I love, my family loves. So it was very cool. And we watched the first season. Like we definitely like, gave it a good chance, but kind of after the whole guy gets picked up to become president and going through that whole storyline of him establishing his presidency, it kind of was like, now what? It turned into any other like president show. Like it didn't have the hook anymore is what I'm saying. So I think that we watched the second season, maybe into the third even, I'm not sure, but we definitely felt it was very like aimless, like what is even happening? And then we ended up giving up on it. So the alternative to Designated Survivor is a show that I feel kind of bad because it's not on Netflix. It's the only one that I'm mentioning that's not on Netflix. It's worth a mention. The show is 24. 24 is a show that was on a bunch of years ago, a whole bunch of seasons. I binge watched it with my family. It took a while, but it was so, so fun. And that starred Kiefer Sutherland also. That's the little connection we got. Kiefer Sutherland in Designated Survivor was kind of like a quiet, lowly meek kind of guy in 24 he was like the coolest dude like imagine the coolest dude Kiefer Sutherland in 24 <laughs> like just kicking butt breaking all the rules solving all the world's problems talk about an iconic character we've got Jack Bauer played by Kiefer Sutherland in 24 each season there was like an overarching like terrorist plot or something that he was like working to you know stop but like the hook of the show and why it's called 24 is that each season takes place over the course of 24 hours one day each episode is an hour of that day in real time so it's really really cool no other show has ever done anything like this so it was a very cool like format of the show and then the content was incredible each season was so good there was like no duds totally recommended even though it's not on netflix it's on amazon prime and some other places i have the link down below so that you can find it really really good and on to show number eight our final show on our list of skip this watch that the final show that i'm going to say skip is one that I'm probably gonna get a lot of flack for. I'm very sorry to everyone out there who's a big diehard fan, but I'm gonna say don't waste your time on Tiger King. She said it. <laughs> Tiger King is a documentary style TV show that was super, super popular a few months ago at the start of our little quarantine situation. Everybody watched this show. And if you didn't watch the show, you have heard about the show way too much. There were some like good aspects of it, like Joe Exotic, the main guy, was very interesting, I'll admit that. But overall, it was kind of just like slow, a little boring. And probably my biggest issue with it was that it felt overall like pointless. I don't know, like I feel like they could have cut it down a lot. It was just like, going through this storyline and then this storyline and then this character pops up and then this one hates this one. Like they just like kept throwing more and more into it. Like it is real stuff, but I don't know. The show was kind of a mess. Not the biggest fan. So alternatively, another show that I would recommend that you actually binge watch that has really good characters I'd say you watch Broadchurch. In a past Netflix recommendations video, I mentioned the American version of this show. That was called Grace Point. But recently I've started binge watching the original UK version of the show, Broadchurch, and it's so good. Even though I've watched the original, like this one, I'm, I'm gonna call it now really like better. It's kind of like a murder mystery type vibe, but not like gory or horror or anything like that. It's like a classy murder mystery. <laughs> the cool part of the show, what I really, really like is just, it's a whole bunch of just great characters great acting really don't know who to believe who's telling the truth who's lying who's a little sketchy they're all kind of sketchy but it draws you in really really quick great drama great emotion overall 1000 times better than tiger king like not even same category at all i feel ridiculous putting them together but it's like binge worthy versus binge worthy this is way more binge worthy there are three seasons of this show. I'm almost done season one. It's incredible so far, and I'm super excited to watch the rest of them. I'm flying through it. It's a great one. Two thumbs up. And uh, there we go. We finished our list of eight shows to skip, and then just like a whole bunch of alternatives that are way, way better, all on Netflix other than one. Shh, we don't talk about that. If somehow you didn't find a show in here that you want to watch and you want to check out my other recommendations, like I mentioned, I'll have all my videos linked down in the description box or in the little eye in the corner. They all like, came up and they're all linked there. If you enjoyed the video, definitely remember to go down and just leave a big thumbs up before you click out because I'd really appreciate that. So thank you in advance. And if you had a fun time hanging out with me today and you want to hang out again, 
I post videos around every once a week. We got that little schedule going. All you gotta do is just scroll down, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell to get notifications of all my new videos, be the first one to watch, and comment and tell me what you thought. And speaking of commenting, nice little segue there. Let me know down in the comments what you've been watching on Netflix recently. Anything good, anything that you just kinda say skip, don't even waste your time on it. I wanna hear your thoughts, definitely let me know. And that kinda wraps up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it and have fun binge watching some good shows and skipping some bad ones. As always, this is by Staffy Dicks.